when I came back. I was still full of the war, and although I was now out of it, I wanted to do something that had something to do with my experience. I was still under contract to Sam Goldwyn. I had one picture left for him to do under my contract. Very often we do pictures, we don't know our subject well enough. Uh, and in this case, I, I knew my subject. I, had, I learned it the hard way. And, uh, and somehow when you have, when you get personally involved in the story, something gets on the screen that makes it uh, human and real. And you can't put your finger at what it is, but it's the director's personal involvement. The picture started, and three minutes later, I was dissolved in tears. And, and, and I cried for, for two hours plus uh, after that, and that was the, the, the opening sequence in, in uh, Best Years of Our Lives. The moment that that guy was out his, was out his arms, was standing there with the back to the camera, and the parents came out, I was gone. And I'm not, I'm not the pushover, believe me. The picture told uh, on several levels what was going on. It was universal in its significance. That's the enigma of, of Weiler. He was not a particularly uh, well-read man. As a matter of fact, he hated reading. He was not a particularly studious man. He had, he had no idea about Strasberg methods, about uh, Russian uh, theater, about... Uh, no, he just... There was an instinct in him that told him when it was right, when it felt true. A genius for getting the truth out of an actor, getting his very best performance, a very a most sophisticated thing that Willie was after. There was a finesse in that guy which you would not expect if you, if, if you, if you just uh, talked to him across the card table, where you talked to him most of the time. It was a long time ago, about 30 years ago, that I acted for him only once in the film The Heiress. The Goldwyn contract finished, Weiler became his own producer. All decisions were now his alone, down to the smallest detail. He was very uncertain about my makeup. In fact, James says that the doctor has a beard, so we made some tests. He didn't like this beard. He says it's too round, I think. Well. So every night we went and watched the various tests of the beard, but he couldn't quite make up his mind. He said it should be square, I think. Don't you think square? I said it could be, it could be square. Or it could be, no. I said, if, Finally, he said, we must either have a round beard or we must have a square beard. Is that understood by everyone? And everyone said, yes, I understood. For the last evening, he came down and he watched. He said, I've got it, I've got it, Ralph, I've got it, everyone. Ralph's beard shall be square but round. First scene we made was a simple shot of Ralph coming in a door, hanging up his hat and coat, playing. He said to me, how would you like me to do this? I said, well, this... <laughs> Not many ways of doing it. Then he showed me about, I don't know, eight or 11 ways, and it was like a symphony each time, so uh, effortless, and each one a little bit different. Oh, Father. Have you waited up for me? Yes, Father, I, I have something to tell you. William says very little. He's not a very eloquent man. This is an amazingly imaginative man. I'm being accused constantly of being, of having no signature. You know, it's a very big artistic uh, demerit. Yeah, I have no signature because <coughs> you cannot tell a Weiler film from a, another man's films by just looking at it. To me, it's more challenging and more fun too to do different types of pictures. In Roman Holiday, I had Gregory Peck, who had agreed to do the film. So there was a British director. I asked him to shoot a test of Audrey Hepburn and then conspire with the cameraman and the sound man when he says, cut, scene's finished, that they do not cut. Well, this director did it just right. She jumped out of bed. She said, well, how was it? At this moment, she was at her most attractive. And I said, this is the girl. His attitude is that only simplicity and the truth counts. It has to come from the inside. You can't fake it. That is something I learned from him.
the producer of Ben-Hur, came to me and said, uh, how about doing Ben-Hur? I thought it would be intriguing to see if I could make a Cecil B. DeMille picture. So I took on the job. It was in line with my desire to make every kind of picture. Also, I thought this picture could make lots of money, you know, and maybe I'll get some of it, <laughs> which I did. Ben Hur did blockbuster business and won more Academy Awards than any movie in history, including Weiler's third Oscar. At one point, quite early in the shooting, he called me in and he said, Chuck, you have to be better in this part. And I said, OK, what, uh, what is it you have in mind? He said, I don't know, but you're not good enough. And I said, well, that's kind of hard to deal with, Willie. He said, I know, but I thought I should tell you. He said, it's awfully hard to make this fella come off plausibly, and uh, you're not doing it yet. And I said, you can't give me any uh, specific uh, advice on this. He said, nope, he's just got to be better. <laughs> all right, on your feet, all of you. He was relentless in his determination to get the best you could give in the scene. And he wouldn't quit until he was, I hesitate to say satisfied, but resigned to the fact that you weren't going to be any better. Willie did more than five or six takes, but uh, the myth of the 40, 50 takes, in my experience, is not true. Uh, I've heard Betty Davis uh, carry on at considerable length about the 40 and 50 takes, and uh, it may be so. Uh, he made me do 48 takes in front of 250 extras. <clears throat> and I had never in my life done more than two takes, ever. The most we ever did in any scene I was in was 27 takes. He would go on to take 63, saying, that was lousy. Do it again. Somehow or other, the number 71 comes out of the mists of memory. I, I can't think that that's possible. I make six, eight takes, and it turns out to be 40. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's true that, uh, that I would make as many takes as were necessary to get the scene, to get it good. During each take, his, his requirements would get a little more severe. Actors would sometimes say to Willie, what do you want? He wouldn't tell them. It was too difficult to tell. It would be some value so fine that it would drown in, its, in the discussion of it. Someone sent him this book of The Collector, which was so different and so intense and so emotional. And he kind of just came really close to me and he said, I'm not making the book. <laughs> I said, what are you making? He said, I'm making a love story. Let me go! I love you. He wanted a kind of constant terror from her. That's, you know, really very difficult to act. So he said to me, off the set, I don't want you to be friends with her. You know, I don't want you to talk to her. I don't want you to be nice to her. We'll just, you know, this is gonna look cruel, but we'll get a great performance out of her. There were certain tactics, I'm sure, uh, that he had in mind. He and I tortured her. That was how we worked. Well, he never gave me a word of praise for about two and a half months. After that, I got the Oscar nomination. I figured that he didn't really speak English. That's what I figured. I thought he's from Alsace. He's grown up speaking French. He's, he's not a man who expresses himself easily in English. However, if he wanted to say something, I remember the character goes back to the bank where he worked before he won the fortune. And just before the take, you know, in that moment when you're sort of open to it, he just sidled up to me and said, um, the taste of the stamps. That's the kind of direction that every actor needs. One of the last pictures I made was Funny Girl. I never made a musical. Now I feel like the man who's done everything. <laughs> I was very fortunate to have Willie as my first director. He knew when it was right. Hello, gorgeous. 
He was wonderful because he was, he was the audience. I just knew he knew when it was right. And he couldn't tell you how to do it differently. He would just tell you, do it again. Of course, I was fortunate. I had played the role about a thousand times. I didn't have to tell her how to sing a song. I didn't have to tell her how to act this part because she knew it better than I. I mean, <laughs> uh, this, this girl knows her stuff. It's what the director wants the audience to see. What he feels about the people in the film, that's what's going to come out. I think Willie was proud of me. Willie wanted to show me off. That's why my performance came out as well as it did. He would ruin a lot of takes, Willie, because he would smoke and cough. The smoke would come in front of the lens, you know, and the cough would ruin the soundtrack. I made the decision to retire because I'd worked 50 years, and I thought that was enough. My next picture, <laughs> going home. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.